Welcome to fig jamming in the classroom. Um, today I'm going to show you fig jamming. It's a whiteboarding tool. It's a very interactive tool and there are a lot of options with it. I'm going to be kind of looking to the side because I have you guys on my side screen and I'll be working off my front screen. So I'll kind of be going back and forth. Um, right here is we to get into this uh, fig jam. If you look at this Fig Jam is, this is what it is. It is just basically a huge blank whiteboard that gives you a ton of options for working with colleagues and students. And right now I'm going to unhide uh, this section that I have here. And uh, this is just a little, how you feeling today? Um, if you want to get a little stamp here at the bottom, and I, or actually, I think you can just uh, place your cursor on there and just say how you're feeling. Um, and in Fig Jam, you can see as people are working, you can see their cursors. So Jeremy's in here and you can see his cursor. Hey, Jeremy. Um, again, if you want to get into this bit, this uh, Fig Jam, here's the code for it. But um, before we get going, I'm going to actually also put my presentation on here. And one of the great things about Fig Jam is you can put uh, any sort of Google Doc or um, slideshow or, sh or sheet right onto your whiteboard for kids to access. So this is my actual presentation um, from uh, Google Slides. It just has a few slides just to kind of lead you through the steps of Fig Jam. I'm not going to access it really today. I just want you to have that as um, for your access. And I'm actually going to give you guys. Um, um, OK, so this is the presentation. It has all the links that you might want and all of the resources. But like I said, one thing that's fantastic about Fig Jam is you can actually take your links from Google Classroom. I mean, excuse me, Google Docs, Slides, and Sheets, and you can link them right into Fig Jam onto the, onto the whiteboard for your students to interact with. The first thing we're going to do in Fig Jam is I want to make sure that everybody is able to get an educator account. So if you do click on the slideshow that I have there, I have this step one, get verified. So Fig Jam is free for teachers. It, I think they've said they'll always be free for teachers and schools. So when you have a moment, I highly suggest going to this page and verifying yourself because as an educator, you get all of these tools for free. Step two is we're gonna do a little bit of exploring in Fig Jam. Fig Jam is like a big sandbox for you to play in. Down here on the bottom of the Fig Jam are all of my tools. So I have just normal tools that you would have in a uh, whiteboard or like on a whiteboarding app, kind of like a Jamboard if you use that. All of these are sticky notes. So sticky notes can be added to my board. I can add mind map connectors and I can add different shapes. One of the great things is you can do mind maps with Jamboard and add different types of shapes. And if you are in my Fig Jam, you can also add to the Fig Jam as well. So uh, other things that they have are stamps. So if somebody says something that you like, you can give them a thumbs up. Or you can give a star. And I'm going to show you some examples of this in the classroom, but I first want to just get you familiar with all of the tools. And then also there are emotions right here. So you have just different reactions. You can also comment or say something. Um, there's, if you hit the button C, that gives you a little comment and I can add a comment like, uh, I agree with this, or I don't agree or give a reason why. So that's another thing that you can do. Um, you can ask questions. So those are my stamps. And then what's really powerful about Jamboard is they have right here with this plus button widgets. So you can add 
different widgets to your Jamboard. One of my favorites is the photo booth, which is just kind of a silly one. This one, it adds a little camera to your Jamboard and you can take pictures of yourself. And being of the Polaroid generation, I really appreciate the animation on this. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I love it. Exactly. So, and now that I have my camera on there, anybody else can, I think, use that camera as well. So if Jeremy wanted to take his photo, he can also take his photo with it. And now I can use, move my photo wherever I want. Again, this is a wide open sandbox. So you, you have a ton of ability and the pit, the awesome thing is there's a lot of ability with this. The not awesome thing is that there's a lot of ability with this. There's Jeremy's up top. <laughs> um, and so the abilities that you have as a teacher on Jamboard, students also have those abilities. So as you're looking at Jamboard and thinking about all of the options that are available, just know that those options are available for students too. So as you plan your lessons, as you plan what you might wanna do with Jamboard, just think about um, all of the tools that students have as well and how to teach them how to use them um, in an appropriate way. It can be an overwhelming tool. Um, so if start small and then, um, then dream a little bit bigger. I think my team, uh, Rochelle is on my team. She's my moderator over here. When we first started playing with um, Jam, uh, Fig Jam, um, there was a lot of wide eyes, like this is a lot uh, of stuff. So, so uh, other widgets that they have, I already put this widget up here. You can do feelings widgets or I agree, disagree. Uh, other things you can do with that is right here, you can see I have results revealed, but you can also hide the results so that students can share how they're feeling, but that the results are hidden. Now here's the caveat of that. Anybody who has access to this Jamboard can hit <laughs> to hide the results or share the results. So um, again, just teaching students how to be respectful with the Jamboard um, helps because there's a lot of opportunity, but um, we need to teach our students how to use it well. So if I scroll through the widgets, they have pie chart widgets, they have dice. So you could just, even if you as a teacher wanted to just create a little uh, dashboard for yourself of different things, they have a dice wi a widget, they have a name picker widget, um, a spinner, they have a coin flipper. There are just many widgets that you could use that you could build kind of a screen for yourself within Jamboard. Now, other things that they've built in for um, making things what I think better in the classroom, in my upper left corner, you can see that there's a timer. So if you have students doing a task, you can set a timer and then that timer will be going for that Jamboard. Um, this helps for me personally, this helps me stay on track and then it helps my students stay on track too. I, one other thing that I really like that um, I don't usually use with the students, but I mean, if you want to use this um, record player, you can also play a little bit of tunes. I don't know if you guys can hear that on your screen. Can you hear it on your screen too? Okay. Um, if, uh, if not in the classroom, you can definitely hear it if you have that hooked up in the classroom. Now the downside is if you have Chromebooks, um, I believe when you play the music, it's like playing from, you know, their Chromebooks and such. So, um, but there are a lot of different options uh, and ac accessories that go with Jamboard. So after I'm done with this, I say your first step is just explore. It's, it's a wide open world. There's a lot of things to explore. Uh, I have put on here some tutorials and some ideas from some great, some great tech experts. This is Matt from Ditch That Textbook. He has some 20 ideas for templates for Jamboard. And we'll look at some ideas in a minute. And then um, we have two tutorials from Control-Alt-Achieve. Um, 
there one's an intro tutorial and one's an advanced tutorial. So if you go, man, I really want to learn more about Fig Jam and Keller did not give me enough, I get it. But uh, there are some great tutorials out there to give you a little bit more. And then this, this is the step that we're going to look at. Fig Jam has a ton of templates for you to use as educators. So I'm just going to hit this and I'm going to go to some of these templates just to give you some ideas of some things that you could do in the classroom with your students. So they have jam boards that compare. They have jam boards that are just icebreakers, like this is animal drawings, um, community activities, reflections, and they have things all the way from uh, elementary school through high school of ideas of different organizers and ways that you can use Big Jam. So I'm gonna go as an example to this Four Corners activity. I'm going to open this as a Fig Jam. And one of the great things about the templates that they've put together is they actually give you kind of instructions on how to use it. So, and like what it's good for. So they have, this is good for gauging students' opinions, skill building and uses. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. On, on this right side is my zoom in and zoom out button, which is fantastic because sometimes you can get lost on your on your jam, on your fig jam. I, I don't know why I want to call it a jam board because this is kind of replacing jam board. Um, so four corners, if you have your prompt here in the middle and then you have a strongly agree, strongly get disagree, disagree, and agree and they would pick their corner and decide where they fit in their corner. This would be an opportunity for all of your students to be working together on this same fig jam together. All of them would be in here. They would pick their corner, pick their sticky note and start working on that. So with fig jam, there are a few ways that you can use it. You can um, use it as yourself as a teacher. Uh, you can use it kind of as a dashboard for yourself to lead you through a few things as you're working with your classroom. Oh, my timer's up, sorry, we're done guys. So uh, thanks for coming, no, I'm just kidding. So for instance, if I was teaching, I might put together some sections for myself. I'm gonna clear, clear this, I'm, I'm not gonna clear Jeremy's picture, but I'll clear everything else off. Um, if you are teaching and you say you wanted to have a few videos that you want your kids to watch and you wanna have a few things set up, um, you could put those right here on your Fig Jam um, dashboard. And you could kind of set it up for yourself as kind of, I'm just teaching, these are the things I wanna teach. Here's the video I was talking about um, from a Control-Alt-Achieve. Here's another video that uh, I could put on there. This is the intro one. And the, to get it on there, all I have to do is copy the, if I can do it. All I have to do is copy the code and actually paste it straight onto the Fig Jam and the video goes right into it. So as a teacher, I could use Fig Jam as just a dashboard for myself just a way to organize everything that I want, all of my um, activities for the day, a name picker, different things like that. If you had a, a touch whiteboard, you might have a how are you feeling today and have your students come up and, or maybe you have your lunch list on there and have your students come up and, and move their name to what lunch they want, those types of things. So that's kind of on the individual, like as a teacher, how you could use it just for yourself for organization. But as far as in the classroom goes, you could create a Jamboard and you could have your students individually work on that Jamboard that you created. So, or you can have them create a Jamboard. For instance, maybe you want them to do a mind map. And so you create a mind map Jamboard and there are tons of them, or maybe you want them to do a timeline. So I might add, this template, uh, maybe I don't like that one. Sorry about that. Let me do a mind map.
Okay, so I create a template for my kids. And like I said, I'm not gonna leave this here for my kids, but say I create a template for my kids. I could share this in Google Classroom and have each of my kids make a copy of it and work on it themselves. Um, then they would all just have their own. And to make a copy, they just come up here and they duplicate it. So that would be an individual way to use Jamboard. And within that, you can have articles for them to watch, or videos for them to watch, articles for them to read. Uh, I could post an article by um, going to News Newsella, grabbing an article, and I can actually drag that straight into my, my Fig Jam as well. And I can have students work on that on their own and have them do things like highlight, you know, come up with key terms, add sticky notes, that type of thing. And they can do that individually. Where I think the power of Fig Jam is though, is collaborating and having students work within a Fig Jam together. But it can be a little overwhelming to do this. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. And as I show that to you, I want you to keep the picture of Jeremy smiling in your head so you don't get too overwhelmed so keep that picture in your head and then think about all the amazing possibilities um, as i show you an example of a fig jam um, being used in the classroom so let me go back i'm going to go back to my files so if i hit this right here i'm going back to my drafts these are all the fig jams i've created and this is a fig jam that was used with college English students. And currently it looks possibly a little bit overwhelming, but I'm gonna break it down step by step how it was used. This was used as like a lesson and then a um, jigsaw puzzle. So I started over here in the corner with what I wanted to start my lesson with which we were doing a lesson on identifying and evaluating bias so i had information here about identifying bias uh, students put stickers on things uh biases that they have seen more um, and experienced more in their lives and then one and then some students found uh, the camera as well, because you always have to find the camera. And uh, so we used the stickers for them to talk about which bias they found. I use this as kind of my intro to the activity. But over here, I actually went into the activity. So I created what are called sections in in Figma, our Fig Jam. This is a big section that I created. It, you can see this like kind of the outline of this section. This is the task that I asked them to do. So this section I had hidden by, hi, by clicking on this I right here. I can hide that section until I'm ready for my kids to look at it. So this isn't so overwhelming. So I created just this section by going to here. This is a little section button. I created that section and then I hit it until the kids were ready to go. And then I split them into colors. I, I split them into groups, group one, group two, group three, group four. Each of those groups were colors, green, blue, red, and yellow. And they read the article for their area. So all I did is I took this information off online. So there are different area articles that my students read. And then they highlighted different information and went through the article and learned this about this piece of media bias. Each group had different media bias that they were learning about. So this is the work that all of the groups did looking at the different media bias. After that, they mix their groups. So each table had a green, a yellow, a, per, a blue, and a red person, and they taught each other their section of media bias. So that's that piece of jigsawing. So that was one task that I did with 
fig jam. Then I gave them all individual articles to read. So this is a new section. I just copied and pasted an article onto the fig jam and each student got their own placemat and they they put their names right here so the students now got their own articles each of them worked on their own placemats to look at their own information and then i put sticky notes right here on the on the bottom of each of theirs to have them react to the article that they were reading they did this for two different articles then they all went and looked at the comments and reactions uh, that each other put on their articles and gave stars and stickers to that. So this is a way that students can interact all together on a fig jam. They're all interacting within this whiteboard together. It can be overwhelming, but it can be very, very powerful having students work together. And you can do it as um, as deep or as shallow as you want. There are really easy ideas of like creating things for students to get to know each other, just creating um, like little cards about themselves, flip cards, those types of things. Um, there are a lot of ways to integrate this into the classroom. They can do um, collaborative walls of like things they notice together. They can do um, Venn diagrams together. So there are a lot of ways to have students interact together within a fig jam. And it's really powerful. But know as that they're interacting, every one of their cursors will be in here moving around. And to get them to interact well, obviously you have to teach them how to work together and how to be appropriate on here. Now, just like Google, um, there is the ability to show version history. So you can look at who did what on the fig jam and kind of know what's going on. I had this happen where a student moved something on me and uh, everything got kind of all moved around. And so I actually went back and, and went back to an old version. But as you're creating different fig jam uh, walls or whiteboards for your kids, you have the ability to lock things so that it doesn't move around. So there's a lock button right here. If you lock it, then it helps things stay in place a little bit as your students are using it. And again, you can hide sections until you're ready for your students. So I kind of see it as a way to like just build a ton of different um, activities for students and then explore together. It's a great exploration tool. So if I go back to uh, my fig jam, you can place, like I said, you can place uh, tons of different things in here. So I'm going to give you some for instances. We've already looked at placing um, YouTube videos. I'm going to delete this. I, one thing that I've noticed with FigJam is if you bring in a PDF, it brings in every piece of the PDF. And so I actually kind of prefer to take a picture of the PDF and bring in a picture for students to work on. So I just took a picture of uh, Lake ECMEC's uh, latest newsletter. And you can put that on there and have students reading uh, the article. And again, they have all of these tools, markers, highlighters, and things to kind of help them process information. So you can bring in PDFs, you can bring in your, um, anything that you've made in Google Docs or Sheets. So I'll show that right here. And to do that, again, all you have to do is copy the link and paste it in. And all of those are then linked directly into your fig jam and students can interact with them. If that works. So my students can go to my uh, my slideshow directly from all of the things that I put in. Uh, other great things you can do. So say you're a science teacher, you can bring in the periodic table and have students interact and color on that. So here's the periodic table. What a great way 
to work with students and have them process something, they can mark on this, they can label it, they can color it, do all kinds of things. You can do this with maps, you could do this with timelines. It is a huge, again, wide open sandbox. I just got the two minute warning from my colleague. So um, I know that Big Jam has a lot to offer, but I'm gonna open it up for any thoughts or questions. So would you say this would be a pretty good replacement for teachers that are eventually going to use lose Jamboard? And is there a convenient way for them to bring Jamboard files over into FigJam? Um, yes, it is. It is kind of what everybody is moving to from Jamboard. And there is a way to move files over. But I've actually, I know that there's a way, but I haven't done it yet. Jeremy, have you done it? I did it once, yeah. And it was very easy. Yeah, um, the, and they have instructions on how to do it. Perfect. I think when I send it out, I might send that um, be, with, stuff with the recording and the when I post it and stuff too. So. That that would be helpful. So big jam, the sky's the limit. I hope that this is exciting to you or helpful to you in your classrooms. And please contact me with questions. Um, again, the if you click on this link. There's uh, my resources, and I'm sure Jeremy will send that out with this as well.